Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We just got these two. They just learned that they know each other. See, it's a small world, isn't it? It's a small world. Amen. I just met Megan yesterday here at the Elks Place, and I've known this girl for many, many years. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's just welcome everybody to Camry, to the Bible study tonight. We've been going on here almost two years. For you that don't know who I am, my name is Minister Randy. Um, I'm just a servant of the Lord and a servant to people. Amen? Amen. And we come here every Thursday faithfully by the will of God uh, at 630 to hold a Bible study and just to share the word and to bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Amen. None of that stuff Amen. is mine, none of it's any of ours, but it's the Lord's, and he's blessing you with it. Amen. Amen. God's a good God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. I am so blessed to be saved tonight. Amen. How many are blessed to be saved tonight? Amen. How many are blessed to know Jesus Christ, Amen. your Lord Amen. and Savior? Amen. Amen. I miss my partner. For two years we were together, Minister Anna. We had a goodbye thing for her uh, celebration last Thursday night, and this place was packed, wasn't it, Pastor, uh, Pastor Gentile? It was. He's an ordained pastor. He does the sound, or I mean, he does the um, video, and this is Brother Marvin. He does the sound. He's a sound technician. Not just a sound, man. He's a technician. He can do all those boards and chords and all that stuff. <laughs> but praise the Lord. Anyways, um, she's down in Florida. We had a wonderful trip for those that are curious. Um, we had, it was a rough trip, I'll tell you. There was a lot of things going on. I don't really want to get it up now because I've got this teaching I want to present. But uh, there was a lot going on. Brian also rode with me down there, and uh, it was 85 degrees when we got there. Nice. Dear God, I, the weather was so beautiful. Didn't want to come back. No, we didn't. But, 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 but praise God, she's down there safe and sound. She's with her family, and uh, she, she loves it down there. But, she, of course, she misses here, too, you know. So we don't know what the Lord's going to do, but the ministry's in a transition, and we're just going to follow the Holy Spirit. That's all we're going to do. I'd like to welcome this young lady here. I don't know her name, but we'd like to welcome you all still. Pardon? Hey. Jazz. Jazz. God bless Jazz. Thank you for coming here. We're more than welcome. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to open up a word of testimony. We're going to get right into this word. I don't want to keep you too long because i got a busy day tomorrow, but we don't want to rush the Holy Ghost neither. Never. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So let's just open up a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you, Father, for all the wonderful things you're doing in our life, Father. And Father, I just want to take authority over every demonic influence, over every evil spirit that would try to hinder this Bible study, would try to hinder the Word of God, and more than that, would try to hinder your children, your people, to receive the Word. I pray every heart would be open, every ear would be open to receive what you have for them, Father. It's not my Word, but it's your Word. So I just ask, Father, you would anoint me and hide me behind the cross. And Holy Ghost, you speak to your people. And I pray everybody will be blessed. And we ask, Father, in this in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. We're going to be talking about tonight, we're going to be talking about the voice of God. Amen? amen. I believe a lot of people want to hear the voice of God. But we also got to realize today we're living in a time in society where there's so many voices speaking to us. Can anybody amen that? Amen. So many voices, come on in, brother, that are speaking to us. Amen. There's so many voices that are speaking to us, and they're outside voices, you know what I'm saying? They're voices of negativity. They're voices of condemnation. They're voices of, of uh, uh, putting you down and, and saying you're not worth anything, and you have no value, and you have no purpose. Amen? I'm here to tell you something. God never, ever intended for any of us to be drug addicts or alcoholics or depressed or defeated or condemned or anything like that. He has a great life for us. Amen? And I want you also to know something. God speaks to us a lot of times. We cannot limit what the voice of God is. I will not limit what the voice of God is because he can speak through anybody. Amen? Because he's God. He's sovereign. He can do whatever he desires to do because he's God. Amen? He's sovereign, man. He's in control, not us. So the voice of God, how can we hear the voice of 
God today when we have so many outside distractions? We have the television, we have the uh, internet, we have the, the Facebook, we have so much different things talking to us and yelling at us and trying to get our attention. Amen? So how can we hear the voice of God? Meditation. That's part of it. Amen? But the first thing that we must learn is our hearts must be surrendered to the will of God. Amen? Amen. We have to have a heart that's surrendered to the Lord in order for us to really hear what God wants to say to us. So our hearts must always be surrendered to the will of God. Amen? Your heart must always be surrendered to the Lord. I can't say that enough. I'm going to say it again. Our hearts must always be surrendered to the Lord. If you hear nothing else tonight, I hope you hear that. Because that is the truth. Who brought the word of God with you tonight? Uh-huh. Okay. Listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. Oh, Pastor did. Amen. Praise God. sorry. Uh, listen, listen, if we were in a battle right now, and you needed that sword, you'd be in a world of trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but guess what? We are in a battle right now, and you need that sword. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Amen. You see, we're in a spiritual Amen. battle. Don't worry about this one. We're in a spiritual battle, and you need this Word always with you. Take it with you wherever you go, man. I go no place. Everybody rides with me in my van, you know the Word of God sits right up on the dash. Whether I go to work, wherever I go, I take it with me. Why? Because I want it with me. But also we hide it in our heart so we don't sin against the Lord. Amen? Amen. Okay, so no one has the word of God except pastor. Amen. All right, that's okay. Just learn, try to discipline yourself to bring the word, okay? Amen. All right, we're going to turn to 1 Kings. We're going to look at chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. And this is Elijah. Elijah was a great prophet. In the Old Testament. Amen. I mean, Elijah did a, a lot of wonderful things under the power of the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. So we're going to take an advice from Elijah, and we're going to see how God speaks to us. Amen? Amen. So we're going to look at Elijah chapter 19, verse 11. It says this, And he said, Go forth, who? The Lord. And stand upon the mountain. He's talking to Elijah. He's telling him to go forth and stand before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and there was a great strong wind, and it tore the mountains apart. Amen? Amen. And broke in pieces rocks before the Lord. Can you imagine Elijah must have been standing there seeing all that happening? I mean, it must have really shocked him. But listen, but the Lord was not in the wind. Amen? And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Listen. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Here we go. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Verse 13. And it was so. What am I saying? God was not in any of that great things that were happening. In the eruption of the mountain, in the breaking of the rocks, in the earthquake, and the fire. He was in that still, small voice. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not going to limit God from speaking, but God's not always in the miraculous to, to things to speak to us by. Sometimes God speaks to us in that still, small voice. That's why I said we have to get our hearts surrendered to the Lord because we have to learn and position ourselves to be able to hear the voice of God. Amen? Elijah was looking for the miraculous, the extraordinary, you understand. But God says, I'm not in the extraordinary. He can be in it, but he wasn't in it then. He says, I'm in that still, small voice. Amen? That's where the Lord is most of the time. He speaks to us like a whisper. Amen? Sometimes it's not loud and booming. It can be, but not always. It's in a whisper. Amen? Because he wants us to discipline ourselves so we can get in a position where we can hear his voice. It took me a long time to learn how to hear the Lord's voice, and I'm still learning, and I'll probably learn until I get to heaven. <laughs> but I have heard the Lord speak to me on occasions. I've heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. 
on occasion. Some of you might look at me like I'm nuts. Well, listen, if you're a mother or a father and you have a child, you want to speak to your child, don't you? Mothers, you want to speak to your children? Well, it makes you think God doesn't want to speak to us. You understand? What makes you think that God doesn't want to speak to us when he's our heavenly father and he loves us more than our earthly parents could ever love us? Because he's got love unconditional. His love is beyond all human understanding. Amen? So he desires and loves to speak to us. But we have to put ourselves in a position to hear his voice. Elijah discovered that God wasn't in all that miraculous, extraordinary things that was happening. But he was in that small, still voice. Amen? Praise God. All right. We got to recognize that God has created us for a close relationship with himself. You got to realize that. We were created to have a relationship with a loving and compassionate God. The creator of the universe knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Fastened you and knitted you together. He says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, he wants to have intimacy with us. He wants to have a relationship with us. You understand? He really does. He proved it when he went to the cross. How much more could God prove that he loved us, the world, sinners, other than going to the cross of Calvary? No more proof could ever be given than when Jesus Christ went to the cross. He did that so you and I and his children can have a relationship with him. Amen? That's why he did it. Otherwise, none of us could have a relationship with God. None of us could hear the voice of God. None of us. But... Through Jesus Christ, we can. So we have to understand that he, he desires to have a relationship with us. Amen? And two, consider your motives for wanting to hear from God. Why do we want to hear from God? What is your motive behind it? Only you can answer that. God already knows. But what is the motive? What is the reason behind that? That's something you have to search out. Amen? Three, Make your goal more than just hearing God's voice. Amen. There's so much more to God than just hearing his voice. It's drawing close to him. It's getting in his presence. It's getting to understand who he is and his love. And let me tell you something. When you begin to draw close to God, when we begin to spend time in prayer and spend time in his word, you will hear his voice. He will speak to you because he speaks to us most of the time from his word, amen, amen. and by his Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. He can't hear, but God bless him. He's faithful. We love him. Amen. He reads lips. So you got to understand something. Amen. That's what he wants us, not only just to desire to hear his voice, but to desire to be with him, desire to have a relationship with him. Something's been changing Randy's life in the last six, seven months that I'm, I, I tell you, I'm never going to stop doing it. But I'm learning to get up early in the morning now and spend time with the Lord. Sometimes I get up 4, 30, 5 o'clock. You can have a seat there, brother. Yes. God bless you. Uh, it's, it's not okay if I use the microwave right now. Yes, it is. Go ahead. I don't care. Okay, if you me. want to use it, go ahead. I can't stop you from eating up your food. You live here. Thank you, sir. So anyways, this is the thing. You got to understand. What, what, let me back up. That I have been spending time with the Lord in prayer in the morning has been changing my life. I've been beginning to hear God's voice more than I've ever heard in my life since I've known the Lord, since I was 12 years old. I've been to many times. So what I'm trying to say is you've got to sometimes sacrifice so you can hear God's voice. Amen? He says, meet me early in the morning and you'll find me. Amen? God bless, Maggie. We love you. I know. Okay. So anyways, we have to get up, you know, I mean, you don't have to, but it's just something to do and, and it's something to practice and it will be so rewarding. Amen. Amen. It really will. It's been changing my life. I got to admit that. It really has. It's been changing my prayer life, my Bible reading life, my, my devotion, everything since I've been doing that. And it's not easy. I have to go to bed early, man. I got to go to bed by 8, 30, 9 o'clock so I can get up early. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. You need to, if, if you haven't done it, I would really encourage you to begin to practice it because it's, it's so beautiful. It really is. It really is. 
and, and, and God will meet you in the morning. Okay? All right. So we have to we, we have to have more than a goal than just hearing his voice. We want to draw near to him. We want to spend time with him. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Let's turn real quick to Jeremiah 33. Well, you guys are in the Bible. Okay. Next time, bring the word and we can turn together. All right, I'm going to turn to Jeremiah 33. Uh, verse 1, 2, and 3, I'm going to read. Jeremiah 33, 1, 2, and 3. This isn't really a lot of preaching. This is more of a teaching, so I'm not hooting and hollering and all that. Because I really want you to understand. That's why I'm teaching this. I really want you to grasp this. Okay? Because if you can grasp this, it can change your life. Amen? Amen. It says this. I, I noticed this today when I was reading this. I didn't understand. I didn't have this verse 1 in here until I seen this, and it really spoke to me. This is Jeremiah. It says, More of the word of the Lord came to, unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of prison. Thus saith the Lord maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So when I was reading there, Jeremiah was in the midst of prison. And God become, began to come to him. And said, Jeremiah, call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things. See, we can be in our lowest state of a position in life, our lowest state of mind. But if we just call out to God, he'll hear you. Amen? He'll hear you, and he'll show you great and mighty things. Things about your life. Things what he has planned for you. Jeremiah was locked up in prison. And God says, Jeremiah, call on me. I'll show you great mighty things. So we can be in our lowest state, our lowest position in life, and yet the Lord can still speak to us if we listen. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Any questions about anything? We can take time and answer questions. Anybody got any questions? Add anything? Praise God. All right, let's turn to Isaiah um, chapter 30, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. You coming back, John, or no? Yes, sir, I'll be back. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, brother. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know, we are so blessed in this country. There's countries right now, I'm going to share this, we couldn't do this right now without being arrested and thrown in prison. It's true. It's really true. So we're blessed to be Americans, man. You have no idea how blessed you are to be in this country. Praise God. Our Christian liberties are still free today. But there's so many countries, and that man over there can tell you all about it, because that's, that's one of his, his uh, callings, is, is to study that and teach that and, and minister to that. Okay, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. It says this, I love this. It says, and thy ears shall hear a word behind you, glory to God, saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. What am I reading? What am I saying? That's the Lord saying, listen, have you ever had that time where you know you shouldn't have done this and you heard a voice say, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Don't go there. And what happens? We do it. And what happens? Something bad. Most of the time. That's the Lord speaking to you. Even when you were in your sin, Christ died on the cross for us. He even speak to us when we were in our sin, when we were in those places we were at, doing the things we were doing. But now that we're his child, Jesus said this. He says, listen, there's only one road that we can follow. It's straight and it's narrow. And few be that find it. But the road that leads to destruction is wide and broad, and many be there. So the road that he's taking us down is a straight road. Understand that it's narrow, but it's the way to eternal life. It's the way to everlasting. It's the way to a life of fulfillment. So when we go to go to the right, he's going to say, don't go that way, my daughter, my son. Or you go to go to the left, if you can hear his voice, he's going to say, don't go there, because you're getting off the road. You're getting off the path of the righteous. 
is a path that gets stronger and brighter and brighter every day. That means it gets clearer and clearer, closer and closer we get to the Lord. The more we can see what God has for us. Hallelujah. The more we can see eternal things. The more we can see the kingdom of God. The more we can see what God has down the road for us. But when we get off to the left or to the right, we're in trouble. Satan's got a trap for you, and he's going to snare you. And that word snare literally means a trap of death. He'll try to kill you. So that's what, gonna, that's what he's going to do. So Jesus says, listen. Listen for that voice behind you in your ear when you start to veer off to the right or the left. And we need to listen to that voice. We really, really do. Because if we don't, we could suffer great consequences for it. And I can't tell you how many times I didn't listen to it. I suffered so many consequences. So many. That were detrimental to my life. And to this day, I'm still paying for it. I was told by, I'm going to share this, I'm going to share this in one. I was told by everybody in my family and, and, and the people that loved me and the church at the time, I was 20, I think I was 20 years old, not to marry this certain person. But I went ahead and did it. The more they told me not to, the more I did it. And listen, the marriage didn't last but maybe a year, a year and a half. I had a son out of that. And I'm still paying for that because my son is, is all messed up and, and, and just all the things that came about me marrying that woman. And some of you have a relationship with men that you know you shouldn't have had. Everybody's telling you not to, and you did. And some of you still paying the consequences to it. You understand? That's what I'm talking about. That's why God says, listen, don't go to the right or don't go to the left, but keep going straight. We got to learn to listen to the voice of God because he only wants the best for us. He only wants us to have the best in life. Amen. He doesn't want any of us to have to be tormented or to be alone or to be hurting or to be depressed or to be afflicted or to be in addictions or any of that garbage. That's all the works of the enemy. That's Satan. So when we hear that voice, and thank God that we have a voice that speaks in our ear and tells us not to go to the right or not to go to the left. Amen? Amen. Thank God we got that voice. Because, man, God is so merciful and so compassionate. I can't tell you how many times I rejected the voice. Stifled it. Didn't want to hear what God had to say to me. Drunk alcohol, smoked crack, did whatever I did so I didn't have to hear that voice. Mm -hmm. Lord, forgive me. But oh, I'm so glad that that voice kept speaking. Amen. Aren't you glad that voice kept speaking to us so we could hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Amen? Because it's the Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that speaks to us. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let's go to chapter, the book of John, chapter 10. Now, this is Jesus in the New Testament. I just gave you, over, there's over 500 and some scriptures about the voice of God in the Bible. There's, 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 there's all kinds of them in there. Maybe more than that. I, I came up with 500 and something I came across on Google. Uh, that's where I get a lot of information on Google, man. <laughs> but Google gets you in the Word, and, and you know you get in the Word, and the Holy Spirit starts speaking for it. See, the Holy Spirit knows about modern technology, so he he goes along with it, and still gives you things, he teaches you things. I love the Holy Ghost tonight, man. I love the Holy Ghost. I love Amen. Jesus. I love the Lord. I'm not ashamed of it. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of it. I love the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Without the Holy Ghost, man, we got nothing. There's no power without the Holy Ghost. That's what God's been speaking to me. You know, I've been hearing the voice of God lately. I've been hearing the Lord speak to me in prayer like, a, like never before. And he's been telling me, listen, we got to have the Holy Spirit in our life. We got to have the power of the Holy Ghost in our life, Facebook. Amen. If you don't know the Holy Ghost, if you deny the Holy Ghost, listen, I feel sorry for you because it's the power of God. It's the, it's the presence of God. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. My God, we need the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the living God. Amen. 
He comes to bring revelation. He comes to reveal Christ to us. He comes to bring that peace and love and joy and fulfillment in our life. The Holy Ghost. There's so much he comes to do. Hallelujah. But we're talking about hearing the voice of God. John chapter 10 verse 27. Listen to this. This is Jesus. I love this. Actually, I'm going to start with 25. Then came the Jew. You, you guys know if you want. Yeah. Chairs are fine. Okay. And Jesus, verse 23. And Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. Then came he, the Jews, round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt if thou be the Christ? Tell us plainly. Oh, is there any doubters here tonight? Is there any doubters here tonight that Jesus is the Christ? 25, verse 25. Jesus says, he says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Amen? Amen. All that he was doing. Hallelujah. Verse 26. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. But hear me. Verse 27. Jesus says, my sheep, my sheep. They hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Woo! Are you his sheep tonight? Are you a part of the Lord? Is the Lord your good shepherd tonight? Are you a part of the, 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 the fold, the flock of Jesus Christ? Amen? If you are his sheep, I mean, if you are his, if you're his sheep and he's your good shepherd, then you know his voice. That's what he says in the word. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My God. So if you're, ha if you're having a hard time hearing the voice of God tonight, then you've got to reevaluate, are you his sheep? Are you truly his sheep? Are you truly his, is he truly your shepherd? Amen? Do you know him as your shepherd? See, when, when the sheep are in the, in the pasture and the shepherd shows up, they all know the shepherd, glory to God. They all run over to the shepherd because they know they can smell him. He, they, 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 they can smell their shepherd because they spend time with him. See, you can't know anybody unless you spend time with him. You may have an idea that you know him, but until you spend time with the good shepherd. Right. Hallelujah. And when he comes, you can sense his awareness. You know he's around. You know he's close by. Amen. And the sheep all begin to go, bah, bah. They're crying out. They're crying out. They want the shepherd to come and protect them or feed them. And that's how we are. Jesus likened us unto sheep. There's a whole other message there. Sheep were very stupid. Sheep without a shepherd will get eaten up by the wolves. Sheep without a shepherd will, will wander off and get in all kinds of trouble. <coughs> they'll, they'll, they're, they're just stupid. They just don't have any sense of direction. They need a shepherd. They need someone to maintain and care for them and love them and keep them safe. And that's what the good shepherd of Jesus Christ does for us. Amen? And if you're truly his sheep, if you're truly his sheep, and he's truly your shepherd, then you'll hear his voice. You'll know him. You'll know him. God bless you, Kim. You'll know him. Hallelujah. And I'm learning to know my shepherd. I'm learning to know the good shepherd. Hallelujah. I'm realizing that I am his sheep. And without Jesus Christ, I'm going to get eaten up alive. The wolves are going to get me. I'm going to wander off the path and out of the fold. And I'm going to get destroyed out there. See, you got to know that you're so weak without Jesus. That you can't live and you can't survive without Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't go on without the good shepherd. Amen. Because the wolves will devour you. And they're right out that door. They're right out the door. The moment we get our eyes off Jesus, the moment we wander to the right or to the left, off that path that Christ has, paved, that Christ has paved that path for us, the wolves are coming to get you. They surely are. They'll eat you alive. That's right, my sister. That's right. That's right. They'll eat you alive. 
I know because they did it to me. But only by the grace of God I stand here. Amen. But I love my good shepherd. See, I love Jesus tonight. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. How many love the Lord tonight? Come on, be honest. Amen. How many really love Jesus? Is he really your good shepherd tonight? Good shepherd. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then my sheep, he says, they hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. See, I'm following the Lord tonight. Amen. I used to not follow the Lord. I used to follow my own ways. But I've learned, man. I've learned because let me tell you, tell you something. A sheep that wanders off and whatnot, what the shepherd does, he'll grab that sheep and he'll he'll put him up over his shoulder, glory to or over his shoulders, and he'll tuck his head under his arm, and that sheep will be going, bah, bah, but that shepherd will hang on to him until that shepherd, till that sheep finally knows that the shepherd isn't gonna hurt him, but the shepherd's gonna protect him and he's gonna love him and he's gonna know that he's safe because he's in the arms of the shepherd. Hmm. How many of us Jesus had to do that to? The good shepherd. He did it to me. Did it to me. My God, I screamed and wailed and everything until I finally come to the place and I realized that Jesus is my good shepherd and that he and he alone can protect me and love me and take care of me like nobody else can. That's the good shepherd. Amen. Amen. All of us have that experience with Jesus. <clears throat> That's the shepherd. That's what he does. And we squawk and squawk all the way through them. You know, he's taking us to, to introduce us to the other sheep so we can feel safe and sniff them and know who they are. That's what he does with us. No difference. We are sheep in the eyes of God. We are really sheep. That's how we act, like sheep. So we have to have a good shepherd, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. My God, I'm so glad he got me. Amen. I'm so glad he got me. And I'm so glad I'm learning to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So tonight, listen, if nothing else you heard, I got a few more scriptures and I'll be done. Tonight, if you heard nothing else I said, I pray you heard what I opened up with. Your heart must be surrendered mm -hmm. to the Lord. It has to be. We have to surrender our heart, our will, our emotions our affections, our desires. Surrender them to the Lord. Trust the Lord with your heart and with your life. And watch and see what he'll do, man. I'm telling you. And listen, it's not going to happen overnight, but I guarantee you something will happen. <laughs> there will be a change in your life, but there's a process we got to go through. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I, I tell people this, you know why we got to go through the process, Sister Kim? Otherwise, we'd be spoiled brats. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. That's right. If God gave us everything, we would be spoiled, rotten brats, and we would forget God and just be like a spoiled brat yeah. child. Yeah. But so God says, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I love you so much. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, and see how you act and see how I can trust you. See how faithful you are. See how committed you are. See what you're going to do. And then if we do the right thing, he gives us more. You can read lips. He gives us more. That's what I'm learning. I'm learning that. He gives me more and more every day. <laughs> more and more every day. And I tell you, man, it just blows me away when he does. He'll do the same for you. And even more. Because he's no respecter of persons. Praise God. So I just wanted to... That really, I wanted to really zero on that. And if you want to look it up, it's found in the book of John, chapter 10, <laughs> verse 27. It talks about Jesus. Our, that he's the good shepherd, and we're his sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Praise God. All right, we're going to go to chapter 16. Hallelujah. Yeah, are you guys getting anything out of this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Praise God. All right. Can I keep going? You want me to stop? Keep going. All right, got a few more scriptures here. Chapter 16, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, okay, praise the Lord. All right. Um, chapter 16 of book of John, verse 13, it says, How be it, this is Jesus speaking, How be it when the spirit of truth has come, amen, the spirit of truth, listen, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And when he, and he shall 
show you things to come to pass. Listen to this. I want you to really hear this because I'm going to bring something out of this. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. What am I saying? When the spirit of truth comes, he will reveal truth to you. See, there's a lot of people re re revealing lies and, and deception and corruption from, 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 from the pulpits and, and from even taking garbage out of the word and just distorting it and corrupting it and polluting it. Listen, I'll tell you the greatest thing how you can know if it's God speaking to you or if it's the word of God, it will never glorify man. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God will never glorify man. He'll never glorify any other person but Jesus Christ. Amen. Woo! That's the detector you want to use. You hear me? Someone's glorifying himself or glorifying any other thing but Jesus Christ. Get away from it. Reject it. Run. Because it's poison. It's poison. Don't let it in your spirit. Don't listen to it. Because he will only glorify me, Jesus says. And all that I receive of mine, he will show it unto you. All that God has, all that Jesus has, he will reveal it to you and I, the Holy Spirit. Now, does he do it overnight? No. Again, he'll do it through a process. As we discipline ourselves to get in the word. See, the word of God is where he's going to speak to us the most. Woo, my God, my God. I'm telling you, get in that word, man. And, you know, this is something I wrestled with. Because I said, Lord, this past time I come back to the Lord, I says, Lord, I don't understand this Bible. I'm being honest. I didn't understand it. I was like, I don't I, I read it, and I don't. I forget everything I read. Can anybody identify with that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all can, right? I mean, I don't know about you. I don't have a photograph memory. <laughs> I have to read things over and over and over before I grasp a hold of it. And I was honest with the Lord. I said, Lord, I can't understand your word. It takes me time. And this is what the Holy Spirit, I'm going to get into the impression. See, the Holy Spirit sometimes, he'll, when he speaks to you, he'll, it's like a hot iron. He'll sear something right into your spirit. Ooh, and you'll just feel it, man. You'll know that it's him speaking to you. He just sears like a hot iron right into you. And this is what he did with me. He put that in me. And what he put in me was, don't try to understand everything. <laughs> Because you're never going to. <laughs> okay. But he says, only get what, what, what I give you. And when, I, when I'm at by the Lord, what are you saying? In other words, when you're reading the Bible, right? You're reading the scriptures and something jumps out at you. That's what he wants you to have. Mm -hmm. Right there. When you're reading the word, hear me. When you're reading the word, something jumps out or you say, whoa, what is that? Or, I never saw that before. Or, it does something to you. Make me turn your spirit. Or, it makes you feel something inside. You understand? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's God speaking to you. And what he wants you to do, he wants you to do 2020 vision. I was told this by my bishop and other pastors. But my bishop told me, 2020 vision is when you read 20 scriptures below it and 20 scriptures ahead of it. And out of that time, you're going to hear what God wants you to hear. You're going to. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I can guarantee that. Because that's the word. So when something begins to stick out, like today I was reading something that really stuck out to me. Uh, I was reading uh, out of, I was reading out of the book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. I'm not going into the scriptures because I've been going quite a long time in this. But um, I was reading in the book in, uh, the book of Numbers. I've read it a couple times, but that's a real hard. There's a lot of things in there. But I was reading in there in chapter 7, and it was talking about when Moses had just got done anointing the altar and sanctifying the altar and all those things. And then the Lord says, now I want you to go to the 12 princes of the tribes of Israel and tell them to bring their offerings. Because it's now ready to have the offerings on the altar, right? So I'm reading that, and I noticed something. I had to get another Bible because the King James has his shekels, and I don't understand all that stuff. Yeah, you know, so I got another Bible, and I started reading the Bible, and I noticed something, Pastor, Pastor Gentile. I noticed that every tribe of the princes of Israel were all given the same offering. The same offering. I never saw that before. I said, Lord, what is going on? And it jumped out at me. And I know the Holy Spirit wanted to show me something. What he showed me is very profound. He showed me that out of all those tribes, each prince.
sense, or each leader of those 12 tribes of Israel, they brought, and I, I double search, because my bishop tells me, Randy, always search the scriptures, so when you say something, you can be right, and, and, and no one can accuse you. So I can say this boldly, back and forth read, to see if Moses ever told those people to give, to the, to, what, what to give for the offering. Never once he did. He never told them how much to give. <laughs> Read it. He never told them. I looked it up. But they all brought the same offering, Pastor. And what I saw that I never saw before, I saw equality. In other words, equalness. Every leader of the 12 tribes of Israel, they all gave equally. Man, that spoke to me because let me tell you something. So many people today are trying to outshine one another. Ministries are trying to outshine one another. Pastors are trying to outshine one another. Leaders and all kinds of things in churches. But way back then, the, all these tribes and princes of Israel, they came equally. <clears throat> that spoke to me. That's when the Holy Ghost was speaking to me. He wanted me to, review, to see that. I never saw that before. But that's what spoke to me. And I started thinking about it and meditating on it. And I believe all those leaders got together and agreed what they were going to give. And not one of them out tried to shine one another. Not one of them out tried to give one another. They all agreed to give equally to the Lord. I never saw that before. Praise God. Maybe that's somebody from Facebook. I don't know. <laughs> but that's what the Holy Ghost showed me. So see, we learn every day. Something new. And I've read numbers before, and I never saw that. Chapter 7. It's in there. So what I'm going to leave you with tonight is that, listen, remember, always have a yielded heart, a surrendered heart to the Lord. When you go, when you go to prayer, say, Lord, I don't understand about surrendering my heart, but I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I'm going to say, Lord, I surrender my heart to you. Before you get in the Word of God, before you read the Word of God tonight, and I pray you go upstairs and you do it. Before you open up the Word, say, Lord, help me, Holy Spirit, help me to surrender my heart tonight. So that when you speak to me, I'll, 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 I'll be able to see what you're saying to me. That, that's it. It's very simple. We compliment. I, I com we complicate. How you say that word? Complicate. Complicate things. Because we're humans. Mm -hmm. But God's word is very simple. It really is. It was written and made so the simple could understand it. It says it in there. It's not, it's not a book where you have to be some theologian or some professor to understand it. Because the Holy Spirit, just as he teaches me, Sean, he'll teach you. He'll teach you, Jazz. Kimberly, my brother, he reads lips. He'll teach you. But we just have to come to a yielded heart. And when anything jumps off the page, I, I want you to do something, please. Next Thursday, if you come, I want you to give a testimony where you read the word and, and some, something spoke to you. Could you do that? I'm going to believe, I'm going to pray tonight that God's going to speak to each one of your hearts and show you something in the word that you can come back next Thursday and say, Brother Randy, look what God spoke to me about. And be excited because you should be excited about it. Because let me tell you something, the creator of the universe takes time to speak to us. We should be very excited. Amen. Very excited. Yeah. One more scripture. I'm not going to read. I'm going to quote it. Do not harden your heart in the day when the Holy Spirit speaks to you like they did in the day of provocation. What that means is don't rebel against the voice of the Spirit. Amen. Don't, 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 don't. Because let me tell you something. You can rebel and rebel and rebel to where you become callous and your ears are deaf. And you will never hear the Spirit of God speak to you. We can do that. We can reject so much that we won't hear the Holy Spirit. And that's a danger place, to, a very dangerous place to be. Okay? Praise God. Praise Father, God. I just thank you for your word. I thank you for these precious souls. I love them, Lord, and I know you love them more than I do. And I just pray, Lord, that they'll, they'll put to practice what they heard tonight, Lord. To surrender our wills to you first. And to allow the spirit of truth to teach us the word of God. Thank you for their lives, Lord. Protect them. Meet every need they have. Bless them tonight, Lord. Let them know these blessings is from the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. You don't want to know the Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.
Yeah, the one in the corner of the cage. Yeah, okay. That's not good. That's not good. I don't hear that. Take care of that. She wants to talk to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to go. You ain't got that one? I don't want to go. Can you get your bag, Francine? Yeah. Yeah, she's got your bag. You need a ride home, Paul? Um, yeah, I'll take a ride. Right. Thank you. All right. I got plenty of room. I got plenty of room. I should have. Yeah, I got another one. Yeah. Yeah, come on, sir. I'm glad you said that because I don't want to hear it either. Huh? What? You said that. I don't know. 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 I don't Oh, I know you're talking about that. Yeah, he won't come down. He knows he's not about the Bible. Yeah, I don't know why he's nervous. <laughs> Afraid of holding off. Yeah.